Um, I'm here today with uh, David Polkey. Uh, David's been good enough to put his hand up and run for us in uh, the seat of Longman. Now uh, we've had 350 odd people put their hand up uh, to run for us, good people like David, and uh, we've been uh, honoured to have the, the quality of candidate coming along and putting their hand up. And um, today uh, David's going to ask me a few questions that uh, concern the people of Longman and, uh, and, and also uh, Queensland and Australia generally. So uh, happy to have you have a go and uh, ask a few questions, David. Well, thanks very much for uh, endorsing me for the candidacy of, of Longman, Fraser. It's, uh, it's a privilege and uh, hopefully we, we get our team elected and not just in the Senate, but also the candidacy be done. Uh, a couple of questions like, what are we going to do about family law? Do you think we need a Royal Commission? Uh, absolutely. Um, the Family Law Court has uh, destroyed a lot of lives. Uh, it's not acting constitutionally. Um, my brother was uh, one of the people who've been affected by this. Uh, he didn't get to see his child for 12 or 14 years. Uh, the Family Law Court pretty much destroyed him, destroyed his, took his assets. Uh, it's just basically redistributing wealth from one partner to the other partner. And, uh, uh, you know, it would have been much better if we had a, uh, a system where the guilty party um, is the guilty party. You know, if you're the innocent party, if the man has been wronged, if, if the, the wife has cheated, then why shouldn't he have custody of his children? But it's always in favour of the, the women, unfortunately. Not always, but 99% of the time. And it's destroying people. It's, it's putting people into, into uh, impoverishing some of these men. Uh, so yes, we've got to have a, a complete and thorough clean up of that uh, area. Yeah, and that's, I'm, I'm hearing a lot of that. I'm hearing a lot of that around the country. I've been hearing some horror stories about child support too. What, um, what can we do there? Well, the child support agency is, is an absolute disgrace. It's, uh, the men are, are guilty when they walk in. My brother, when he used to go in there, he said he was, he was the enemy as he went in. You know, all men are hated there. It's run by some pretty hardline females and uh, it's, uh, the, the male is, the, that has to be abolished. Just get rid of it, uh, pay your child support through taxation uh, and it's got to be on the money that you, you after tax money. He was being assessed, I don't know if this happens to everyone, but he was being assessed on what he earned before taxes and it left him nearly broke. He, he, was, he was on the bread line all the time. He paid his money, but he, he just didn't have anything left for himself. So his life was miserable. It affected his, his uh, you know, he, he was depressed and, uh, and that's what happened. And now we're having, we're having men committing suicide because of this, because of this, this lousy agency that should have been abolished long ago. Uh, Self-funded retirees are really worried that if Labor get in, they're gonna get hit pretty <laughs> hard financially. Well, if Labor get in, uh, Labor has all these feel-good programs. They've got a lot of these uh, so-called refugees they've got to look after. Uh, they're handing money out like uh, a man with no arms, and it's got to come out of the pockets of somebody. Uh, it's going to come out of the, the hard-working uh, Aussies, and the worst thing that they're going to do is attack the retirees. Now, if you've worked hard all your life and you've been thrifty and you've put some money aside, uh, you should be able to have that money and these people don't believe you should. If you've bought yourself an investment property 30 years ago, you've worked, done your work, and now all of a sudden th these guys are going to steal your money. And uh, uh, Shorten has told us point blank he's going to attack them with the Franken credits. He's al also going to attack our retirees with uh, the negative gearing, you know, so if you've bought a property and you can rent it out and you can get a little bit of uh, relief there. But the other one, the, the worst one, I think, or another big one, is that they're going to also bring in the death and succession mm. duties. So if you've worked hard all your life and, you, and you're getting towards the end of it and you think, well, at least I'm going to give the kids something, you know, they've got a house or a, a bit of money or a few shares, they're going to steal that as well. So, you know, th that would be a, the biggest disaster for Australia would be if we put Shorten and the Greens in there, um, we're going to put people out of work, he's going to double the bloody uh, renewable energy thing. Uh, that'll put people out of work. It's already closing down our heavy industries like uh, in the town I came from, Gladstone, they've, they've shut down sections of the smelter because they can't afford the power. Now if Shorten gets in you'll double the price of power. He's trying to tell you that it won't but it will actually double. That's going to shut down industry. He's also going to shut down coal mines and put more workers out of work. So uh, the biggest disaster Australia could face is if we got Shorten and the Greens in.
Okay, so what about all this crap about electric cars, mate? <laughs> How's that going to affect the tradies? Um, uh, we've got to hit the tradies. Well, I'm a, I'm a, a shooter and a fisher, and I, and I love to go up to the peninsula and shoot pigs and catch a few barramundi and are up to the Gulf of Carpentaria. And I can tell you now, an electric car's not going to get me through some of the bog holes that I've got to go through. <laughs> And I don't know where I'm going to repair it. I don't know what he thinks I'm going to do, put a bloody solar panel on the roof of it and hope that it gets me home. But, uh, you know, I've got mates who are tradies. I worked in construction for a fair while and, and some of those guys are carrying over a half a tonne of tools in the back of their, their truck for their job. Uh, what, what electric car is going to... You're not going to get a Prius to carry half a tonne of tools. It's lucky to carry three or four people. So uh, he, that's madness, but that's what he wants to do. He wants to close down all our coal mines. He wants to close down our our um, electric generate, you know, our, our uh, you know, our generating power, our ability to generate power with coal-fired power station, and somehow we're going to plug a little bloody pussy car in and, and get uh, do our job. Well, we can't do it. And look, a lot of my mates and, and go up the beach on the weekends, take their kids camping, you know, which all Australians should have the right to do. You're not going to do it in an electric car. So um, yeah, it's, it's a it's a madness. A real concern, blokes' mental health. Yeah. Veterans, what are we planning there? Oh, well, we, we've got a really good, strong policy for the veterans, you know, to look after them. We can't, uh, we can't allow them to be attacked. Uh, right now, they're, um, you know, they're splitting the, uh, uh, their uh, uh, DVA, and you can't do that. You know, the, the DVA, you know, the, um, the, uh, their, it's like workers' compensation, I guess. They're uh, totally and permanently dis disabled or... CPI, uh, they're classing that as an asset, and uh, you know these guys are now. They may have, you know, over the next 20 years, have a million and a half or something coming to them. They're now trying to, if they have a divorce, they're trying to take half of that. Well, that's completely wrong. So we have a very good, strong policy that will protect our veterans and and it particularly protect their their ability to survive. You know, we don't want to put them in the in the you know below the poverty line, and that's exactly what's happening now. Yeah, it's not just the veterans either. It's you know, it's, it's the rest of the rest of the public that are suffering from mental health, post-traumatic stress disorder, all those sorts of things. But they need help. They need help. The Absolutely. aged care need help as well. Um, another one. The major parties keep saying we're strong economy. <laughs> I'm hearing that. That's not what I'm hearing on the road. People don't have more money in their wallet, do they? Uh, well, most people have less money than we had 30, 40, 50 years ago. And this strong economy, a lot of it, Dave, is what's happening is that they, they, bring, they brought in last year, and you won't hear this from the major parties, 830,000 permanent migrants to this country. Now, if you bring 830,000 people into a country, they're all going to buy a TV and a washing machine, they're going to have a cup of coffee, uh, they're going to buy all sorts of stuff. And that makes the economy look good, but quite a lot of them are doing it on our dollars, you know, particularly the fake refugees. So they're actually spending your money, our money, the taxpayers' money, to make the economy look good. It's a bullshit economy. So, you know, but they'll, that's why these major parties keep on wanting to bring more and more in so that they look good. But, you know, you can't just keep on using taxpayers' money to prop up the economy because it's, it's a joke. So our, our economy needs to be built on things like dams and, and irrigation and uh, farming, mining, um, infrastructure building, but also uh, bringing back our, our, uh, our uh, uh, I guess, uh, all our industries. We've lost them. We had car industries here. We built our own cars. We had steel mills. We need to start manufacturing again. And people say, well, you can't compete with China and all that. Put a tariff on their stuff. We build beautiful cars. You know, Holden's are a great car. Ford's are a great car and we're not building them anymore. So how do we protect our industry just like they do their industry? They get subsidised. So we should be putting a tariff on anything that comes in here, just like, like Mr Trump's doing in America, and regrow our industry, and we can do it. Absolutely. Well, I think that's probably about the questions that I needed answered, mm -hmm. um, especially for Longman, what we want to do around here. Yep. So, Fraser, Good on you, Dave. You. And, and by the way, thank you very much for having the courage to stand up for Australia. Uh, I think we all need to stand up for Australia, mate, not just me. I think the you. whole Australia needs to stand up. Good on you. Thanks, mate. Yeah, thanks, Dave. Good on you.